Avoid this culture shock if you go to Japan. Now, as someone who went through major culture shocks when I moved from Japan to America, I know how different the two countries can be. But if you want to experience the anime, ramen, technology, here are five culture shocks you will experience if you go to Japan. You will be shocked that everything in Japan is so much smaller. Food is smaller, people are smaller, cars are smaller, even trees are smaller. Some of the reason is that Japan is an island, so there's not that much space to operate. But also in general, Japanese people like small, kawaii things. A little chibi style you might have seen on anime characters. But obviously most of these toys or portion sizes for food was normal to me in Japan, so when I came to America, I was like, why is everything so huge? And I mean, everything. Number two, you will be shocked at how safe Japan is. Just like the TV show, Old Enough, when I hit kindergarten growing up in Japan, my okasan would send me off on a journey to the supermarket, alone. That's because statistically speaking, Japan is one of the safest countries in the world, and it's, it's true. Walking home during the night is not an issue for anyone, and even public transport during the night is just as safe as it is during the day. I would promise you, you will have a culture shock about this when you go to Japan, because you'll be like, oh my god. Why are Japanese people so careless all the time? Like one of the ways you might experience this is that most Japanese people would not have a problem leaving expensive bags, clothes, or even laptops on the top of their desk or whatever at a cafe while they go to the bathroom. I would say even in most places in America, you wouldn't want to leave expensive or even just normal things because it could be stolen if you leave the area that occupies it. But if you go to Japan, you might be like, oh my god, why did that person just leave all that uh, all that laptop and stuff? Or what if someone's gonna steal it? And the reason it might seem like they're so careless is that when they come back, it will most likely still be there. So I remember still my parents when they started visiting to America or when we visited America the first time, they're like, you can't leave stuff anywhere. You can't, you gotta get your bag. You can't, don't leave it out of your sight because it could get stolen. Why? Because they got their Canon digital camera stolen back in the day apparently when I was three um, when they were visiting New York City so it's like Japanese people have to know when they come to America that they can't leave stuff unattended another thing that you will notice that even in the center of a big city like Tokyo or even Osaka it's still pretty safe you'll be shocked to see elementary school in the center of Tokyo just going about their day commuting or walking from school to home you're using train station you're using public transportation like, like no problem like you'll be waiting you know you'll be waiting to go to Shibuya at a train station you'll look to the right and you see a six-year-old kid straight out of elementary school you're looking back at your left like like this and you're like oh you just I, I, are you waiting for this train with me? And he's a little alone and it might be a culture shock, but he, he, that's his daily uh, commute for a six-year-old. So if you go to Japan, I have heard many of my friends and peers say how shocked they were to just see kids running around everywhere alone and that it's safe and no one thought it was dangerous because it typically is not. Number three, Japanese people got their fashion figured out. If you go to Japan during the winter months, I will promise you, no matter what gender you are, you'll be like, oh my god. I need a wool coat. I need a nice uru coat. Like everyone during those months, I mean, everyone is wearing a wool coat. It might be black, beige, blue, it doesn't really matter, but everyone has a very nice wool coat on. But not just wool coat though, they got their business style fashion figured out and casual style figured out. It's not just Harajuku culture, there's other casual daily fashion style that's popular in Japan. I would say one of the reasons for this is because both men and women are fashion sensitive, at least from middle school. They they care, they both care about how they look. And the thing about Japanese fashion is compared to American fashion, it does tend to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more uh, detail oriented in certain places that uh, American fashion might not be. But in general, I would say girls tend to like the more flowy, skirt-like dresses, and guys kind of do what they just kind of do. It kind of, you know, big shirts, whatever, and s sweaters, but they still care. They still care about their fashion. Going into a little bit more guys' fashion, because I'm a guy, I would say guys in Japan are definitely more fashion conscious than Japan, because when I went to Japan and met my friends in late high school, they'd be like, my fashion wa daiji da yo. And I had, I had to say, Tashikani. Because, you know, not many of my American friends cared too much. And, uh, 
we looked a little sloppy. We looked a little, a little not put together. And what's funny is I would say Japanese fashion is what Japanese people think about Western fashion. It's their take, a little little Japanese twist on it. And I say that because I know, you know, American fashion. And when I looked into the Japanese fashion, obviously there are bits that they definitely copied from American fashion, but it's nothing like American fashion in general. So that's why I say it's a Western fashion with a little, little Nippon twist. But obviously the kimono, yukata during summer festivals, or if you go to Kyoto, right? or basically anywhere it is awesome to see those traditional Japanese fashion as well I would say if you ever get a chance to put on a yukata or kimono wherever you are in Japan just just go for it because Japanese people will actually appreciate and be happy that you're trying them on and you'll probably look good yourself you know take a couple picture walk around you'll look better than what you imagine yourself to look like wearing a yukata I promise you that number four you will be shocked by the prevalence and the usefulness of the convenience store in Japan I guess technically it is in the name but when I was in Japan when I lived in Japan I was like convenience stores do be convenient and before you go to Japan if you've never been there you have to throw out the preconceived notion about what a convenience store is like all that 7-eleven just throw it away because Japanese 7-eleven that's a luxury luxury experience you'll walk into a, a Japanese 7-eleven a little jingle place you look right you see Jagariko you see a little seaweed potechi you look left you see unlimited supply of onigiri infinite flavors some flavors you know tsunamayo okaka kombu sake anything you could imagine <laughs> you can even get pre-made bento boxes straight straight from the refrigerated section of the convenience store some of the bento boxes of course salmon shake a little bit of tonkatsu perhaps and it says a little bit of vegetable and rice with it and it's actually generally pretty good and you can obviously buy any goods you need like a nail clipper or a scissor or whatever and they're all sold separately but another thing you will notice is how organized and clean it is every single one of the convenience stores the bathroom is also typically clean and almost every convenience store has a bathroom and the customer service is top notch so i would say if you are in japan and you get a little hungry don't don't hesitate to uh get a little convenience store bento box or onigiri obviously if you have the chance just go to a local store but if not just go to a convenience store it's not gonna hurt you should know that most japanese people do call it konbini instead of convenience store and konbini is just convenience abbreviated to konbini Last thing you'll be shocked is how clean and the care they put into all the little things. First, let's talk about let's talk about the bathrooms, the, the main topic of this conversation. <laughs> bathrooms is often referred to as toilet. Basaroom is not that popular, it's just to say toilet. And it is actually way more high-tech than anywhere I've ever been to. So the first thing is when you walk in and you sit down, you might have noticed, oh my god, it's a it's a little bit warm. It's kind of warm. But don't worry, it's most likely not that someone was just recently sitting on it. It's because there's a toilet seat warmer implanted in the toilet. And they do that because, you know, that little, you know, shock of a feeling when you sit down and it's cold. And, you know, you're like, ah, oh, I wish it wasn't so cold. Now, that, that's not going to happen when you're in Japan. And then after you sit down, you get a little a little comfortable and you look to the right and you'll see you'll see a bunch of buttons you'll see a little like armrest looking thing with a bunch of buttons on them before you go sick of mode and pressing all the buttons i would say i would say be careful and think about it one of the buttons probably a bigger one if it has a picture of a of a butt and a little sprinkler looking thing it, it is probably a bidet and bidet is basically this little thing where it come out and spray water up your tush how convenient is that that's you know, a little, you know, you get a little, you, you, you get clean. Another button will play like a little music so that if you're making noise in the bathroom, it will play a little jingle so people outside will be like, oh, they wouldn't hear the, the noise, but they would just hear the jingle instead. I'm not sure how well that works out, but it's, it's the thought that counts. It is, it is somebody thought about that, so I, I appreciate it. And there's obviously buttons you could push to flush the toilet. The first one is dai, which means big, and if you press that one, that one is for when you go number two. And then there's another button called sho or uh, small, which which is for when you use number one. And if you ask what would happen if I click the wrong one, the wrong button while flushing, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Because obviously the high-tech toilet will know that you press the wrong button and go straight to jail. 
drilled on this, but I guess it might save some water. I, I did I did test it out, you know, because I was curious myself. And definitely the water currents is much smaller in these small flush button more you know and in general the streets even in the city of, of tokyo is super clean cleaner than any cities i've ever been to and in the little parts of the street you would notice something cute that someone has done to organize or make something cuter it, either like a picture not a graffiti but like a picture or if you notice some certain dozo which is like a statue of a monk per se it's not necessarily a monk it kind of represents like shinto gods half the time but it's a representation of a spirit so people would have flowers on it or some child might have put like a little hat on them so that they don't get wet during the rain like they care they, they put effort into the little things as well as keeping the whole place clean and if you like clean atmosphere you know clean streets you'll really appreciate that there are probably germs but it's clean so don't litter if you go to japan keep it clean you know just you know Keep it respectful and clean, you know, enjoy the bathroom and keep the bathroom clean as well. One thing I would have to say, if you see a washiki toilet, which is basically a Japanese traditional toilet, it's basically just a hole and you kind of have to squat down, standing uh, between it and then use the bathroom. That's just not worth it. I, I did it when I went on field trips in Japan because it's still common in like old buildings. It's not worth it. If you if you skip leg day during the gym, it might not end well. So if you see a washiki toilet or just a, just a hole instead of a high tech bathroom, just make a run for it. Arigatou gozaimasu for watching. More videos are coming, I promise. And subscribe to join the Nakamai. Peace.